The Minecraft community has been under attack. And it's not by Mojang, it's not by Microsoft, not by any other fandoms, not by people outside of the general gaming sphere, but it's by us, the community itself. And I'm getting tired of it, to the point that I don't even know if I want to make Minecraft content anymore. For the past five years, we have done nothing but attack the game we love so much. From falsely claiming that Mojang is lazy, to outright boycotting a fun little activity they have set up for us. And to be honest, a lot of my colleagues are not helping. A lot of bigger YouTubers are either milking the community's anger for clicks and are just misinformed and spew nonsense out without even trying to double check. And to be honest, it's very tiring. And I seem to be the only one out here to even bother to correct the deep-rooted myths that plague our community from deep of within. For example, the Bedrock vs Java debate, the Mojang is lazy myth, the mod loader fanboys shouting their preferred mod loader is better because they said so and their mom agreed with them. So today, I am shouting and literally shouting because I'm a little bit mad into the void once again and try to dispel some of the rumors that plague this community in the hope that at least some of you will see this and stop to think, is this really my opinion or am I just repeating what I heard? Let's actually start off by one of the biggest comments I get all the time, Mojang is lazy. Now let's also just start off by saying Mojang is by any means not perfect. They have their shortcomings. For example, the DSCA claim towards GTM, that one GTA server, for having guns in their server while never going after similar servers or mods is a little bit iffy the same with the account migration opinions vary that was also not a not a good thing to do but by far the thing i heard the most is that mojang is lazy and that my dearest friends my dear potato munchers is just untrue the main argument i see is this long list of gameplay updates and the lack between microsoft buying it and now and that's the thing that people bring up a lot. Microsoft buying Mojang and the Minecraft IP was followed up by the longest pause in updates we had since 1.7. But what people don't discuss is why this was the case. I'm going to assume many of you have not worked in a corporate setting before, so allow me to explain. When a bigger company buys a smaller one or another one, it needs to integrate it into its own ecosystem because they do certain things their way. This means either merging the bot company outright to the point that there's no difference between each other anymore and they become one big company, or in the case of Mojang, adapt the leadership structure. Notch sold Mojang under the clear pretense that he would leave the development team and Mojang itself, transferring the leadership position to Jeb, who then oversaw the integrations into Microsoft's corporate way of doing things, but that was not the main reason why things took so long to update. With Notch's departure, it was up to Jeb to ensure Minecraft's survival, and to ensure this, he took it upon himself to rewrite large swaths of Notch's code on his own. And this was the main reason behind the large delay between the buyout of Microsoft and 1.19. Ever since then, people have compared the amount of new things in each update, but I think people forget just how much shit we already have. Elytras, woodland mansions, shulker boxes, new oceans with the goddamn dolphins in them, the new villagers, bees, netherite, new build heights, the warden, and so many more, all came after 1.9. But Lunar, didn't you make a video about 1.20 is shit? Yes, yes I did. Yes, I made that video. On the surface, even I was a tad disappointed with what 1.20 brought to the table. But let's talk about the stuff no one talks about, including myself. The stuff buried at the bottom of each snapshot and update post. Snapshot 24W06A made data packs a lot better and usable. Snapshot 24W03A allowed for custom servers to send cookies to make loading into the same server later very fast. The same snapshot introduced a new packet system that allowed players to swap from a lobby server into any other server on network. Previously, we needed proxies for that. And the latest update forced the minimum required Java version to 21, which could lay the groundwork for even more modern tooling and thus better performance. Another major factor of why Mojang is somewhat slow with updates is because of one simple thing. They care about their game and their employees. If you're unaware, in game development there is a term known as crunch, where 
you are expected to work 10, 12, and even in some cases, 16 hour shifts. Looking at you, Blizzard, to reach an arbitrary deadline. This has caused a lot of developers to either burn out, quit their jobs, and in some cases, far worse. Mojang doesn't do that. They know forcing your employees to do inhumane hours to reach an arbitrary deadline is not going to give them better results. In fact, I don't even think they set deadline for updates. They also don't push out things that aren't polished to their standard. Say what you want, but I can't even remember the last time I encountered an actual bug in Minecraft as a casual player, just in survival or in multiplayer. I can't even remember it. A lot of people said on my Distant Horizons video that Mojang must be stupid if a modder can do this, but they can't. The fact is, they can, they just don't choose to. And why I love James, my beloved, his Distant Horizons mod wouldn't even have passed in a snapshot, let alone being a release. But speaking of what people are saying in my comments nowadays, it seems a lot of you have seen this video by my good colleague QB Metra. As some of you spew his exact words in my comment section to either my full length video about Paper MC or my short talking about it. By the way, I make some banger shorts edited by Kiz and Vesper. Go watch them on the toilet or something after this video. But it seems you have missed the point of that video entirely. The problem isn't that PaperMC is a bad software in general that makes Minecraft unplayable, it is that it's not designed for technical players. It seems people forget that PaperMC or its bucket derivatives or predecessors are and were the backbones of a lot of the biggest servers Minecraft have ever seen for years now. Because it aims to do the one thing and one thing only, get as many people on the same world as possible. In the name of performance, they had to sacrifice some vanilla features. And now, in my opinion, they shouldn't be bug fixing stuff that doesn't affect server admins. But in the right context, it makes sense. Say you don't fix TNT duping in a server with an active economy. Something like a faction server. Well, now you essentially have an infinite money glitch that essentially ruins the whole game mode you set up to play. So yeah, for technical players, Paper is basically the devil and he murdered your family in front of you. But for casual Andes like myself or someone who has been involved in large production servers, also as myself, Paper and by extent its derivatives are not bad. They're just geared towards other types of server. Fabric at the moment does not have the tools to allow for minigames, factions, townie, and so many old school game modes that are staples in the online community. I had this comment the other day on the paper video from this one guy saying optimizations don't compromise, which is beyond a doubt the most stupidest thing I've ever heard on this channel so far. So congratulations, you can get your prize later down this video. But let's be honest here, let's say you make a game with a tree in it and it spawns apples every second. The problem is that these apples tank the game's FPS because it has to render all these entities all the time. Are you really going to tell me that you're not going to limit the spawn rate on that thing because your GTX 42069 would slow down to the point that it's exploding? Are you really going to tell me you wouldn't do that? Because you're compromising for optimization, right? That's what you're saying. Seriously, people, wh what happened to like forming your own opinions and just not blindingly accepting others or just accepting others' opinion in general? And if we want a good example of people not accepting others' opinion, I don't think we need to look much further than the history of mod loaders, something I've been documenting for the last few months, which you can watch right here. I've interviewed so many people behind the scenes, talked to so many talented people making mods, making mod loaders, also behind the scenes, and why I like them all. Seriously, you all are pretty cool people. They all seem so willing to hate each other and shit on each other's code. Neoforge going after Forge, Quilt having issues with Fabric, Forge in previous times having issue with Fabric. It, it just doesn't stop. This has manifested itself into the community itself. The amount of comments on this channel alone proclaiming one mod loader is the one true messiah. It's people like this who absolutely refuse to believe that Forge can be performant, Quilt isn't just a drama loader, or that Neoforge isn't just Forge rebranded that are the problem. We already have this in the Linux community. This is called splintering, where thousands of distros are all shitting on each other, and the people using them also shitting on everybody else it's a fuck fest i mean there is a reason why i use arch by the way it's so mean to hell and back in fact fuck that meme i'm making a new one from now on every time 
you see someone comment about that mod loader being superior than others, you just react with the I use insert mod loader here, by the way. I'm I'm so tired. I'm so tired of the bickering. And ladies and gentlemen, this this brings me to my whole point of this video. I'll be honest. I don't know if I want to make Minecraft content anymore. That was not clickbait. That was not to draw you in. This channel started because I wanted to document what was being forgotten, stop misinformation about Mojang, Minecraft, other mods, other softwares, getting out of hand. I wanted to spread positivity. But this community is just all negative. Just look at us. The YouTubers we follow only tell us this game is shit because they want clicks from you. Or worse, they target kids with these over-the-top editing styles and stupid thumbnails, and then everybody is shocked when they found out the guy talking to kids for a living is a groomer. The mods we use are scattered across four different pieces of software with everybody complaining about them and everyone else. People on Twitter taking things out of proportion for clicks and views. Because you're angry and that gives them money. And for what? You just want your five seconds of fame? You just want to say you were popular because you made a tweet? What's the point, man? That's the question I've been asking myself. What's the point? And yes, even when I'm writing this and talking this, that's not English. I know I'm rambling. I know I am. But I'm so done with this community. We need, we need to take a step back and really think. Is it really fair to shit on Mojang about updates when most of us bought this game 10 years ago and we still get them for free while treating their employees with actual respect? Is it really okay to just blindly follow Every YouTuber with a big number next to his names and hate on a software that has brought us some of the biggest names in Minecraft history. Is it really worth boasting that you use a certain mod loader because you think it's better? No. No, it's not. I love this game. I love it to bits. I grew up with it when I came home after being bullied for eight hours or when I felt bad about that situation. I booted this game up to make me feel better because I liked it. I like to be able to just punch down a tree, make my own stuff, hang out with friends that were miles away from me. Because I didn't have them. In, like, my close vicinity, I didn't have them. I only had Minecraft. Which sounds sad, but that's the case. I made lifelong friendships through Minecraft with people who I still see regularly today. This stupid goddamn block game means so much to me. And to see the community that I used to love dissolve into bickering and infighting. I don't know, man. It just hurts me for some reason on a personal level. But I've said enough. Lunar out.